Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I am a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, we meet with current business management and geology student, Sam, to discuss finding confidence in yourself and settling in and excelling as an international student. Sam is a fantastic student who's done lots of great things at the university since traveling 6,000 miles from Zimbabwe after he received the Vice Chancellor's Scholarship. Before we begin, however, I just wanted to let you know that this episode has some minor audio issues at times. However, you can hear the majority of the great advice that Sam gives, but some parts will be slightly muffled. Okay, so hello Sam and welcome to the Success as a Student podcast. Would you like to just briefly introduce yourself to the listeners? Hey Alex, uh, many thanks for having me here. So I am a final year student studying business management with geology and I'm about to finish and hopefully move on to full-time employment and a part-time master's starting in January. Well, from what I've seen so far with your journey as a student, you seem to have been a really successful student. So I'd just be interested in knowing a bit more about your student journey from when you started in your first year to where you are now in your final year. Thanks for your kind words. I really appreciate it. So I started off in 2018, September. So I actually came on board through a scholarship option, which was the Vice Chancellor Scholarship. So it was uh, an academic scholarship. That's how I came on. So I guess with that, it sort of, um, put me in the spotlight, basically. So I was able then to, you know, sort of leverage that to have access to more opportunities in that regard. So, yeah, I think it's just the platform that I was able to get, um, thankfully. I really appreciate it over there. Yeah, so um, how did that happen? How did you find it, for example, then how did you uh, manage to obtain it? Well, so the Vice Chancellor Scholarship actually was um, an online application. So it uh, works that you had to have an unconditional offer from the university. And then there was an option for international students to get, you know, various scholarship options and university options, you know, just to sort of ease the funding of uh, university. So I applied for it um, out of a whim. I really didn't think I was going to get it, to be honest. And, you know, thankfully, I got it. So it was just one of those things that was just so surreal that, you know, um, out of uh, prospective number of people, I was the one to to be able to get it. It's really interesting because there are always the times when you actually, where you often do get it, is when you have no idea and you just put yourself out of there and hope for the best, don't expect anything, and you're able to be successful. And that's a piece of advice that I would always recommend other students do. And yeah, would you would you recommend students go forward for scholarships as well? Definitely, man. Um, I think, you know, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So it's just one of those things that, you know, it's worth the shot because at least with hindsight, you can all say that, you know, I took the shot. If I didn't get it, A, we move, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It's a really, really important thing. Like you said, though, if you don't get it, you just move on. You carry on, keep going. And it's a trait that we've talked about a lot in the series so far, that resilience and being free to fail and just going and keeping going and hoping for the best and being positive. So talk about how you first got to the university through an academic scholarship, which you obtained by just going for it. But how about when you started university? I remember hearing that you come from Zimbabwe. So how was that traveling all that distance to study here? I come here from Zim, um, I, I think it's about 6,000 odd months. So it's definitely quite a walk uh, from Zim. So, you know, I came here and it was a... Uh, Matter of fact of, you know, having to change, adapt to the climate, having to you know, adapt to like a different form of living. Because, I mean, I'd always um, grown up in a sort of multicultural sense. I went to multicultural school, but, you know, it's just one of those things, moving to a new place. Um, as a foreigner, you just have to adapt to the way of doing things. So it was, I wouldn't say it was a quiet culture shock. It was more of a weather shock uh, above all things. But, you know, it was just one of those things where you just take it and you stride day by day and you just kind of move forward. When I started university, I started adapting to having to cook and clean for myself and feeling miles out of my comfort zone. You had all that as well as also traveling six and six thousand miles across the uh, across the world. So you must have done something. So do you have any advice for students who are in a similar boat to you who come to university as an international student and adapting? Have you got any advice for that? 
I think the advice I'd really give is that you know what, um, even though you've come all all this while, even this person down the road that's just come from down the road, they're in the same boat as you because I mean it's a new place. You all you know sort of in this boat, and no one knows each other. It's just a matter of saying hi. You don't know where a hi is gonna gonna translate to. Because I remember when I moved into halls because I was in halls of residence my first year. Um, one of my flatmates came and knocked on my door. He introduced myself, and he said, "Hey man, my name's Sam." So like, hey, I'm Sam as well, you know, it's that kind of thing. So you just already have that common element to it. So, you know, simple hi can just translate into years of friendship. Yeah, I think it's a great piece of advice. Um, just say hi to people, see where it goes. Just say hi. Especially when you're new at university. Um, I think I met lots of my friends by just speaking to them when we started because everyone was in the, the similar boat. Do you have any other advice about how you could make friends uh, with different people and meet people with similar interests at university? I think don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, I think one of the things that I really was intentional about doing was just to, you know, showcase where I'm from and what I'm about. So, you know, people always ask me, oh, you know, you have a different accent. Where, where are you from? You know, we start having a conversation about Zimbabwe. Oh, Africa. Uh, do you have a pet line? No, that's that's not a thing. You know, one of those conversations. <laughs> and, you know, we just start having conversations, start exchanging banter. Uh, don't be afraid to show your culture who you are. I, mean, I always say, you know, don't be afraid to take your flag with you. Things that are very personal to you, like your photographs, people from home, you know, and then to then like push you forward in the new environment that you are. So never be afraid to show who you are. Yeah, definitely. I think it's really important. It's one of the reasons why I'm interviewing today about being bold because that's another element. In a past episode of the podcast, we talked all about being bold in terms of getting opportunities, but now we're talking about being bold in making friends and meeting people, and that's equally important, especially for your well-being at university. Was there any support or any organisations that you took advantage of whilst you were at the university? I'll help you with that. The International Student Centre was extremely supportive. I mean, they helped me from stuff like uh, showing me where, you know, lecture rooms were, showing me how to, you know, use the local banking systems, you know, showing me how to, you know, apply for jobs, get a national insurance number. So, you know, they sort of held your hand and really guided you, you know, what you're supposed to do. So, you know, if you're in doubt, ask. Someone's always willing to lend a hand. Even if it's a fellow student, you don't know, I have any directions, you know, just ask. 100%. The interesting thing is a stupid question. So we talked a bit about your first steps in terms of starting university and your advice for other students starting university. But I remember when I met you, you were at the end of your first year and you'd already seemed to get quite settled. I think I met you at a Christian Union event whilst I was campaigning in the Union of Students elections. And you seemed to have settled quite well. And I think I remember when I saw you were speaking from the crowd, but I was very inspired by the different impacts that you'd made towards settling in university. So would you be able to talk us through the transition between when you first started university to um, where you are now almost and different steps that you took and different opportunities that you're able to undertake? Yeah, it's funny that you say I was uh, in front of a crowd because naturally I'm a quite a reserved and shy person. So, you know, a couple of years back, I would have never thought about that. But then I think coming to university and having sort of the endorsement that the university gave me, saying, you know, we believe in you and we gave me this award based on what you achieve. It really spurred me on to say, you know what, if I can do this, then I can probably do anything. So I was really intentional in, you know, stepping out of my comfort zone, just trying new experiences. I'm in a new place. I'm in a place where I can, I don't want to say reinvent myself, but I'm in a place where I can, you know, try new things and be able to have different experiences. So I was really intentional about, you know, getting new experiences, being able to challenge myself in that respect. Definitely. I think yeah. university is a place where if you do want to reinvent yourself, you can. No one, often very few people know you or even no one knows you when you start. So you can have the opportunity to reinvent yourself. And Stephenson and I did, um, and I've discussed that on another episode already. So earlier you mentioned about how you had to push yourself out of your comfort zone. I'm just wondering, how did you do that? What was restricted holding you back and how did you overcome that? I think just self-doubt. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things that you always in your mind. I remember when I even got the confirmation that I'd um, been awarded a scholarship, I thought it was a prank. It was just, you know, that sort of default of never believing in yourself. But then, like I said, when I got that endorsement, I really just spirit myself on to be like, if I can achieve this, I can achieve anything. So, you know, just stepping out of my comfort zone and just having that self-belief in myself that I can do it. 
So you might have held on to or used the fact that you've been successful in the past to help spur you on and push you further. Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think I used I, I used to do things similar, and so that could be a good example of if you've ever done something before that you're proud of, try and use that as an inspiration. If you haven't, go out there and try things, and you never know that you might find that success that you can then use to push yourself further and further into doing out of your comfort zone and doing amazing things like you've done, Sam. Yeah, of course, definitely. I remember last year before the pandemic um, started. I remember seeing your face all around all the screens around the university and I remember see, thinking, that's really impressive. There's Sam out here again, doing his thing, getting out there, doing great things. And I'm just wondering, how did that happen and how did you make the opportunity for yourself? So I actually uh, applied to be a uh, marketing rep. So with that, uh, I was able to and blessed enough to get the opportunity to be uh, part of the undergraduate 2020 campaign, which was really just detailing the journey of undergraduate students, about six of us. And then with that, it just kind of led me on to other opportunities. So it's just kind of a dominant effect in that, you know, you step into one opportunity, another one sort of arises. It could be that you're in the right place at the right time, or it could be that, you know, you just refer it just be based on past experiences. So I was able to do that. And then just using my experiences as an international student, I was able to integrate that into my story and then venturing into, you know, stepping out of my comfort zone. Because I think that was my tagline for it, you know, just stepping out of my comfort zone, tackling my new challenges. Definitely. I 100% agree with you when you were saying about how one opportunity leads to another. It definitely, they definitely do. And as we said earlier, you started your journey at university with that scholarship and applying for it. And who knows what would happen if you hadn't applied for that scholarship and taken that opportunity. And then that led to one opportunity from another to another. And I remember when I was discussing my, I remember when I was discussing my own opportunities and my own story. It all started with one decision, and that's I think something important to highlight is it starts with one decision. Go out there, take that decision, be bold in that one moment, and it can lead you to amazing places. Definitely so, yeah. I, I like to think of it as a domino effect. You know, one decision just sort of leads to another, and then it's just a whole chain chain reaction. So. It's interesting you say about domino effect because that can often mean that you get lots of opportunities coming your way. Just wondered, do you have any advice for how you take opportunities? I actually did struggle with that in the beginning that I was not able to say no. So it got to a point where I actually did kind of burn out, I think, in my second year because I was just, you know, overwhelmed with both my studies, taking opportunities and saying that, you know, being so intentional with, you know, trying to be the best I can be. But I think just being in a position that you're honest with yourself and saying that I don't have to accept any op like every opportunity that comes my way because, you know, another one's going to come. But I think just trying as much as you can, it's all about time management at the end of the day. You know, you just got to manage your time, manage your schedule as much as you can. 100%. I uh, definitely agree with that. And uh, you have a very similar story to me then in that front. I didn't actually know you much in your second year, but... I, I burnt out my second year doing exactly the same, trying to take as many opportunities as I could, and doing too many. So when you were deciding whether or not to take one opportunity or not, are there any factors that bear into that or any factors that help you in deciding, yes, I'll take this one or no, I won't take it? I guess it was more me just uh, the commitment level I had at that time. If I had an assessment coming up, I just said, uh, I'm really just focused on my academics right now. If I had some free time, I'll be like, yeah, I'm up for it. So it's just knowing your schedule and how to balance everything. Um, in the previous episode, when I met with Sue Jennings to talk about how to take opportunities, um, we discussed about sometimes you might find yourself in the wrong opportunity and how you can get out of that. Have you ever had an experience where you entered into an opportunity which actually it doesn't fit your time schedule anymore. You had to get out of it. I haven't. If I have, I, I don't think I was aware of it because I've always been, you know, so adamant that any opportunity is a good opportunity anyway. So if I can sort of have the benefit of hindsight and say, okay, maybe that wasn't as great or I didn't enjoy it as much, I just won't go back to it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, often, especially when you've got short-term opportunities, you don't know until I guess it's too late. And sometimes even things that don't seem to be too promising when you first see them, they can lead you to the best opportunities. So for example, when you start off as a marketing rep, I don't I don't imagine that straight away you had that opportunity to be 
in the undergraduate campaign where you were on all the screens. I imagine there were small opportunities before then, before that. Is that right? Yeah, that was right. I mean, I started rafting blogs, sort of detailing my experiences and my journey. And then I moved on to vlogs, actually doing like, you know, residential field trips because uh, part of my course was actually field trip oriented. So I started doing that. And then I guess that just led to the opportunities, like, would you want to take part in this? And I just kind of took it both hands. Yeah, sounds, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, sometimes you don't know how good opportunity is and then you take it and it leads to something amazing. Um, early on, you mentioned uh, time management uh, in terms of how you have to manage your time. Do you have any advice for that? I think it's based uh, pers- like on personality preference. For me, I've noticed that if I write down and have a vision board of what I want to achieve and sort of have a time lapse of what I want to achieve and buy, uh, that really helps me sort of visualizing everything this really helps me but i mean for some people it can all be integrated on your phone or anything some people would just work best under pressure so just based on you to be honest 100 percent, yeah it's definitely uh, subjective uh, it's one of the reasons i ask you because i always like to see different people different ways because if anyone's listened to this they tried some of the ways we've already discussed and they didn't work for you well maybe sam's way of writing things down might help i'm personally an electronic person i like calendars I like to visualize in my calendar when I'm free, when I'm not. And even then I can prioritize how I do it. And Sam, you've got seemingly a slightly different way. The final question about taking opportunities to ask you, Sam, is do you have any advice for students who want to improve their skills by taking opportunities, just in general? In general, I think uh, I'll approach the relevant people. So I know the careers and employment service do an excellent job of, you know, sort of tailoring your CV in whatever regard you may need. So like CV clinics, maybe you want an opportunity that's maybe work-based or work experience-based. But for me, it's just, you know, keeping up to date with what's going on. I actually didn't know until my third year, like how much is actually offered by the university. Because I mean, when I entered my third year, that's when I joined the Be The Boss program. So it's sort of like an entrepreneurship startup. And just knowing like you could actually apply for jobs directly through the university, I didn't know that. So this is actually just being intentional with your search and actually like taking deep because some of the best opportunities are actually just, you know, you have to take a bit deeper to get them. And often you might find them by doing exactly what you said earlier, which is just speaking to people, asking people questions. I've got this idea, where can I go with it? So if you said that, you may get told, oh, be the boss, the scheme offered by the career service, uh, which is an amazing scheme. And I'll leave links in the description of the YouTube version of this podcast for that. And also an episode where I just I met with the Oliver Stonier who runs the Be The Boss scheme about how, how he explained how that can help you with your enterprise skills. So you mentioned that you're involved with the Be The Boss program. And one big aspect of the Be The Boss program is networking. I just wondered, as a student, do you have any advice for networking? You know what, actually, it's funny that I say that because I always thought networking that year is really formal. You have to network with like large corporations and all, but networking can literally be with a group of peers. You know, you're sharing lunch, sharing ideas, you're already networking. But I would say be really like get started on building up like a LinkedIn profile so that actually people can start to like literally visualize and see you online. A lot of presence for yourself, just social media, maybe like Facebook, Twitter, everything. So I think just networking, just speak to relevant people like lecturers, they can point you to the right people as well. University offers a lot. I actually think you're definitely someone who's good at networking. And I, it was interesting, after I first met you when you were in your first year, usually when I network with people, I have to, and I'm interested to talk to them, I have to approach that person. At this event, you approach me. And... That shows you've got networking skills. You've never met me before, and you came up and just said, Hi, my name's Sam. I'm studying business. I think it was, what is it, business management? Yeah, business management and geology. Geology. Ah, Yeah. Very close. (laughs) Yeah, very close. (laughs) And you introduced yourself with that line, and I remember that because that's really bold and a great tip for networking. And that was peer to peer networking, and it creates opportunities in the future. And it's always just good to network by doing by making friends, but also make what network by what you're doing on social media. Great advice. Definitely. Definitely. The final question that, that I have for you today is a question that I've actually asked every single person who's been on this podcast. What is your advice for being successful as a student? First of all, be intentional with yourself. 
it's really about what you want and how you're going to get there and why you want it. People will say, you know, focus on your why. Why do you want to do it? Just have that why at the back of your head all the time and really it will make everything so much easier. I think peer-to-peer -peer networking as well um, can lead you to fantastic opportunities. You know, surround yourself with people that inspire you, that build you up. I mean, like yourself, Alex, you know, getting to know you, I found that, you know, you won so many accolades with the university, so involved. I mean, you're running for president when I met you. So, you know, having that connection with people, you really get inspired to actually just improve yourself because like, you know, if you can do it, maybe I can do it as well. And I would say, you know, just believe in yourself, just literally believe in yourself, take the shot, take the opportunity and everything. Just be aggressive, be aggressive. Definitely. Really good advice there. So thank you very much, Sam, for all that advice, uh, for detailing your own tips and for being honest about your experiences. Hopefully you've inspired some of the people who were listening today. Thank you very much, Alex. It was uh, an honor to be part of this and many thanks. You know, It's been a pleasure getting to know you as well and seeing your journey. Progress. Thank you. You too, Sam. You too. Thanks, Sam, for sharing your story and all the advice that you shared throughout the episode. Sam has a real simplicity to the way he speaks, which is amazing, and it's made finding the key takeaway points from this episode really easy. So first, when you start university, just say hi to people with a smile, and see where it goes from there. It may seem like simple advice, but it's actually a really great step to making a long-lasting friendship. Second, don't be afraid to put yourself out there to meet others, and don't be afraid to show others who you actually are. At university, there are loads of societies and groups that you can get involved in, which can help you to find people who have similar interests to you. And that's a really good way to start making connections with people who are outside of your course. The final takeaway point is to use what you're really proud of to help to push you to do more. Sam often thought about his scholarship to give him the confidence boost that he needed. However, you can use anything. Whether it's the fact that you're proud of getting up one day, or speaking in front of a crowd, or so on. So. If you can think of something, then use it to motivate yourself. But, if however you cannot think of something that you're proud of, then use the very fact that you want to be proud of something to motivate yourself to go out there and do more. What I often did when I wasn't proud of much, was to think, okay, I want to have something that I can proudly talk about in a job interview. And that's a really good way of motivating yourself. Thank you for listening to this episode and for persevering through the audio issues. I really hope that you found it useful. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio. And to Lily Kent for transcribing the series. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar and Naomi Bowers Joseph for giving feedback and helping in the planning of the episodes. Thank you very much for listening.